Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I'll show you guys how to access the secret developers mode on the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 and talk about the on pixel ratio for various watch faces as well as the Knox enrollment service. So let's get started. If you are someone new to our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel as we do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. We have an entire playlist full of Samsung smartwatch videos so be sure to check it out. Before I show you anything, please hear me out with this disclaimer. Developer mode is strictly restricted for developers only. Playing around with developer mode is not recommended. You can try these tricks out as shown in this video at your own risk. I'm just sharing it with you. That being said, let's start by showing you how to enter the developer mode. By default, the developer mode is hidden so that the general public cannot access and mess things up. Now, go in the settings, about. Here is where I accidentally found something that I am not sure about and I want to share it with you. So if any one of you know about it, please comment down below. When you keep clicking on the serial number for about 7 times, you'll be prompted to this keypad where you can input numbers and letters which I'm not sure what it is for. The same keyboard will also pop up when you keep clicking on the serial number in the devices. Sorry, let's not get off track. To enter the developer mode, you have to go in the software and keep clicking on the software version until you are prompted that the developer mode is turned on. Now before we go back, all the way at the bottom under the battery, you will see this debugging turned off. You can turn the debugging on by clicking on this. Debugging allows you to copy files from your computer and install apps from computer either over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It's not that straightforward process but this video is not for that. Now speaking of developer mode, you will find it in the main setting menu. When you open the developer mode, you will get two options, A to turn on the on pixel ratio and B to exit the developer mode. So apparently you only have the on pixel ratio in the developer mode. This is a unique tool helpful for the watch face developers. I also think it will be helpful to regular people to see how power consuming a watch face is in the always on display. Now since the always on display consumes power at a low rate, the on pixel ratio also known as OPR is limited to a maximum of 15%. Now the on pixel ratio is the sum of each on pixel RGB value compared to the value when all the pixels on the screen are turned white. FYI, as you can see in this image, white has the highest value of all the red, green and blue pixels and you can see that black has all the value of RGB as zero. So the OPR increases when more pixel stays on and when the sum of the RGB value is higher. So with the AMOLED displays having more black means the pixel stays off. So that's why you can see a lower OPR value on watch faces like these. Now this is why Samsung recommends to take visibility into account rather than simply lowering the overall brightness as per this image where you can see in the don't the brightness is just lowered but in the do's you can see that the watch face looks more crisp. It will have much lower OPR as only few pixels are turned on and the rest is just black. So hope all this makes sense but the general takeaway from all this is that if you see a watch face that has a higher OPR with the always on screen activated then it might consume more power. So let's say if I like to have the always on display for any reason then out of all these watch faces I will select this one as it has the lowest OPR of 6.17% versus the one which has the 11.52% basically double. Now this should make a significant difference on the battery life as the screen stays on all the time. So you want to aim for a lowest number with more details and crispiness. Let's see what my current watch face has to offer in terms of OPR. So the 6.99% OPR is not that bad at all. I have seen animated watch faces having the worst OPR with least visibility and details. That's why I like the Urality watch faces. By the way, I have done a full in-depth review video for this watch face linked up here in case you guys want to check it out once you are done watching this one. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is the Knox enrollment service. To access it, again go in the settings and then about, 
wherein you can keep clicking on the model number for about seven times until you see a pop-up that the Knox enrollment service is on and it will prompt you to confirm to turn it on. I will not turn it on and neither should you as this is a service for big corporation for a zero touch deployment service that allows them to quickly enroll large number of devices to their MDM or EMM for corporate use. As shown in this image where there is no need of the IMEI management and verification once the IT admin registers a device with the service the device user simply has to connect to a Wi-Fi or 3G or 4G connection during the initial device setup process and it's all done. Once a device is enrolled it can't be tampered even if the enrolled device is factory restored. This feature is used by big corporations to skip unwanted setup steps such as Google or Samsung account registration, automatically sign in to MDM agents with user credentials, etc. So this is absolutely no use to general users. But I think there is one use. Let's say if I purchase this device second hand and I want to make sure that this is not a corporate owned device and I can just check it from here if it gets this pop up or not. Now this is just my thought, I can be wrong as I am not a developer but it's just my thought. So that's it with this video, I hope you found something useful in this video, please subscribe as I'll be posting more videos for various smartwatches. So I really hope you found this video helpful, if you did then please give this video a thumbs up and maybe give it a thumbs up anyways as an appreciation to our effort for making this video, it really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching and take care, I'll catch you guys in the next one.